I'm not good enough. <laughs> You've said those words? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Unfortunately. I, especially like today. I'm not good enough. I'm sick today. So I might even have some help today. Y'all stick around. You might have a special guest join us and actually help us out with this Bible study. So don't you be scrolling because this is going to be something besides me talking the whole way through. There's a surprise coming for you guys. So hang on. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm not good enough. That's what we're talking about. We're moving on our studies now to Jeremiah and Lamentations. That's where we're going to be. And you guys, this is going to be really awesome because we're going to address this whole thing called imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. What is it? It's this thing where, you you know, you get that knot in your stomach and, you know, you just feel like you, you're never good enough. Do you ever feel that way? Yeah. And, I mean, chances are we've all had that at some point in time or another. It's, it's really aggravating. Um, I mean, you're talking about things. It's a lie that convinces you to wear a mask. Hmm. Go figure. Or maybe it's something that um, you go through and deal with, like, um, what happened with Jeremiah. So mm -hmm. everybody's saying, who's Jeremiah? Well, we're going to find out who Jeremiah is. He's one of God's people just like you. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to study a little bit more about this imposter syndrome. And hopefully by the time we get done with this study, and it's going to go over a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about this. Hopefully when we get done with all this, you guys are going to have a little more confidence in yourself. That sounds like a good thing. I tell you, I'm, I know that I say I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. And the thing about that is I take pictures and I do things, but I never could get anybody's attention on Facebook. I couldn't do anything with photos. It, Occasionally, I'd get a like or, oh, that's pretty. But whenever I quit messing with it completely and was like, I can't do any of this, but I put scripture on it for some reason. I don't know why. I just said, well, I wonder how pretty it would be to put a scripture on this. And I just, you know, let God take care of things. And in one night, 70 people grabbed it and liked it. Then all of a sudden, 700 people. And next thing you know, a whole new page has started and you got truth inspired and somehow I'm the one who's running it and I'll tell you what in the world's going on. I thought I wasn't good enough. Well, I'm not. And you're not either, but God is. I am weak, but he is strong. Anybody ever hear that in the song? Of course. Of course. I am weak, but he is. Okay, I won't sing. I won't do that to you this morning. <laughs> what I will tell you though is being an imposter or being somebody who just can't feel like you're good enough is it's very common and God's going to choose those people. And he's going to do that on purpose. He's going to do that because as you see in stories in the Bible, you can find numerous ones. Look at David and Goliath. Look, I mean, look at anybody. Even when you go up against the serpent in the garden, you have heroes and stuff to some degree. You, you have every single story in the Bible has a hero, and it's usually the underdog. And they do prevail. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to be whenever time comes to an end? Well, I'm going to help you out a little bit this morning. You know how we say our prayer? We're going to pray for the people who are sick and everything. God bless them. But we're going to say a special prayer this morning because I'm going to tell you, Jeremiah actually did something, you know, he was able to tear off that mask, as you want to speak, and was able to follow God even more. Mm -hmm. He had the same syndrome. He asked questions. He was doing things. And what happened? He could not do what he needed to do. He just didn't feel like he was good enough. God listened to every one of his complaints. Mm -hmm. And I want you to, as we read through here, if you don't get anything else, listen to how he complains about things, but how he also accepts things as he starts to move along. And you see a change occur in him, and he ends up becoming exactly what God wants him to. Right. Because that's what's going to happen with you. And hopefully by the time we finish discussing Jeremiah in a couple of weeks, you're going to have more confidence in yourself and know how to deal with this syndrome and never have to deal with it again. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. It all deals with if you give it to God. So that's where we're starting this morning. First thing first, you got to admit that you're a sinner. You have to repent and you have to make sure that God is in your life. Right. That's, that's number one. Number two, by faith, receive Jesus Christ. You know, the gift of forgiveness from sin. He took the penalty of your sin by dying on that cross. Just in case some of you don't know what I'm talking about with Jesus. There are some out there. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. If you believe in God, we got to get you there first. Then we need to talk about the Trinity and got to explain the gospel. Most people have heard of the gospel because of Christmas time. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, by the way, there you go with that imposter syndrome again. No, I'm not saying that it's fake. 
I'm saying that you have the lowest people and they end up doing something for God. Mary and Joseph, right? Right. You got Very a humble. carpenter and you got a family Poor. and you and look what happens. They mm-hmm. end up, Jesus ends up being the mm-hmm. one in their family. I mean, come on. That's humble if I ever would say so. Mm-hmm. He comes to in flesh. God comes in the flesh to do what he needs to do. Mm-hmm. Now, that's not what this Bible study is about, but I just wanted to throw it out there to let you know, see, it's all over the Bible. It's not just where we're going to be in Jeremiah. So as we do this, listen for those things. All right, back to that prayer that we're praying. Let's go ahead and pray it by itself. If you'll nod your heads right now, because by faith you're accepting God, you're accepting that Jesus did die on that cross. That's what we're going to do in this prayer right now in case anybody hasn't, and we're going to just say our prayer to open our Bible study as well in doing that. All right? Father in heaven, I admit that I am a sinner. I know that I am wrong and you am weak, but you are strong. Forgive me for all my sins, Lord. Strength, energy, and guidance. Help anyone out there who doesn't know you come to know you. And these people that are with us right now, let them, as they say the words, you're hearing their words, and let them become, by faith, come into you and do what needs to be done. They're confessing their sins to you, Lord. You already know them. You know everything, Lord. Strength, energy, and guidance. We know what happened, God, with you on that cross and that you, Jesus, are my greatest example that I could ever have. I confess not only my faith in Jesus and not only my sins, Lord, and ask for forgiveness, but I ask and give you everything placed in my faith in you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you help me every day with strength, energy, and guidance as we conquer imposter syndrome and do the will of God as needed to be in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Now, anybody who just said that prayer and you believe it and know it, guess what? You're saved. That is a big step going towards heaven because you can't get anywhere if you don't believe in God. I have the biggest problem people saying, why do you not believe in God? Well, usually it's people who have something happen in their life they don't like. Mm -hmm. Like they're sick or somebody dies or something happens that they don't approve of. But just like my photos in Truth Inspired and things like that wouldn't get even seven views on Facebook, the moment that COVID hit and I quit worrying about things and I just let God have it, he took it a whole different direction that I wasn't even looking at. Instead of photos, he turned it into the verses and the photos and eventually testimonies from you guys. And it's now got some views, over 100,000 views on some of our photos and some of our videos. It's amazing what's going on with the site. And it's because of you guys, but mostly because we gave it to God. That's right. God's going to take it one way or another. He's going to have his way, so let's give it to him, right? That's right. All right. Now, I'm not feeling that good, so I got a special treat for you this morning. We have someone else that's going to chime in here because he's got it right, and he knows what Jeremiah did, and he knows what's going on. So it's his week. I said he could do our Bible study, and I'd be here to answer any questions, but guess what? We're going to let Kyle Fortner do this. We, he's got it down, and I do appreciate it, and I invite you guys also to check out Socasty Baptist. Thank you for, they are the ones who gives us our material and things. Mike Elaine is a wonderful pastor. If you're looking for a church, SocastyBaptist.com. That's a wonderful place to start. They do streaming, so you might like that, but I do want you to know we're going to continue doing these Bible studies. We want you not to be secure. No, not have that problem with any more of the syndrome thing. Instead, we want to strengthen you by the end of this so that you guys are more confident in yourself and what God can do for and is doing for you and others for that matter. So guess what? We're going to let Kyle take it now. Kyle? Hey, everyone. It's Kyle here. And um, it's my week this week to do the Bible study. And I decided that I would read to you all um, Jeremiah 1, 4 through 19, and do our lesson this week uh, out of those, our little Bible study. So I will begin reading. Um, in Jeremiah 1, 4 through 19, verse 4, um, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, All Lord God, Behold, I cannot speak, for I am youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, 
And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See that I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, What do you see? And I said, I see a boiling pot, and it is facing away from the north. Then the Lord said to me, Out of the north calamity shall break forth on all the inhabitants of the land, for behold, I am calling all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says the Lord. They shall come, and each one set his stone at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem, against all its walls all around, and against all the cities of Judah. I will, will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness, because they have forsaken me, burned incense to other gods, and worshipped the works of their own hands. Therefore prepare yourself and arise, and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, let I dismay you before them. And for behold, I have made you this day a fortified city and an iron pillar, and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests, and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. Um, and so this is a lot in these verses. And what these verses are is it's a conversation between the Lord and Jeremiah. And the Lord comes to Jeremiah and he calls him to be a prophet. And he says, he gives him all these signs uh, to prepare him to be a prophet. And so in verses four, in verses four and five, he first comes to him. The Lord first comes to Jeremiah and tells him about wanting him to be a prophet and ordaining him to be a prophet. And in verse six, Jeremiah was not very sure. He said, in verse six, Jeremiah speaks back to the Lord and says that he cannot speak. For he is only youth. But the Lord said, um, the Lord said that for him to go anyway, even though he is youth, because he said the Lord will deliver him. Well, the Lord said that he will deliver you. And he told him not to be afraid. And so in verses 9, the Lord says that he will give Jeremiah the words. For him to speak. In verses 9, he said, the Lord says that he will give Jeremiah the words to speak to all these nations. And as this passage goes on, it comes to after the Lord gives Jeremiah signs, so the Lord comes to him and he speaks to him and he says that all the kingdoms of the north will come. And he tells Jeremiah that there will be war and there will be other nations that will come to and arise against Jeremiah and will these nations will fight against him and that they'll be against Jeremiah and for what he stands for but he says in verse 19 he says the Lord tells Jeremiah that he is with him and he says that he will deliver him even though that he'll be fight, fighting against all of the wickedness of these people and all of the evils and everything that's coming his way as a youth. And so I think the best part of these verses is it's a great reminder that the Lord is with Jeremiah and he can be with us too. I think what we need to get from this passage is that if we let the Lord, if we allow the Lord to come into our lives, that the Lord will be with us and that we can prevail against the evils as because the Lord said he will be with Jeremiah and that the evils will not prevail against him and that Jeremiah will overcome them. And so I think the, 
what we need to get from this is that we need to let the Lord be over our lives and that we need to be like Jeremiah and allow the Lord to work in our lives and to let God use us. Thanks y'all for listening. That's, you know, I got to say one more thing. That was awesome. But, you know, it's amazing you just how that goes together because you see that God gave Jeremiah the big job of proclaiming his message. Right. He may be trying to give you not necessarily the job to go out and evangelize, but he very well might be giving you the job as a person to just live a Christian life. And you'd be surprised be how an much example. You, you got it. You'd be surprised by just doing that, how many people might come to you anyway. And on that level, too, we're back to what we're going to deal with with confidence. And that is, as you read those, he read those verses, you saw that the Lord basically is going to do the same thing in your lives. He's going to give you confidence. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a difference between being overconfident and being confident. Right. We want to stay humble. We want to stay in the Lord and let him do it. That's why we pray and let him know always that everything's going to go well and accept and do what he needs to. Oftentimes it doesn't go well, but that's how we get our testimonies. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest problem I get is why did God let this happen? Well, maybe he's molding and making you or building your confidence. I don't know, but I do know something. He has his reasons for things. We need to give it to him. And I think Kyle did a wonderful job of explaining that. I wanted to give you guys somebody different to talk to. We're going to do that. If you're interested in doing some of these Bible studies or readings for us, contact us at truth.inspired at yahoo.com. And I believe that's how you'll get us. And, you know, or you can message us on one of our social media sites. <clears throat> so either way, we want to hear from you guys. We love to be able to explain things and do stuff on our page. I hope you're enjoying that. But more importantly, the biggest part of all is, is letting God into our lives and letting him do what needs to be done. Got that, guys? Yeah. Now, the challenge, just so you guys know, we want to make sure and see if we can get more people to um, do different things in their lives. I want everybody, as we go through this, to see if you can find a way to build your own personal confidence. And I think you're going to find that the first and the easiest way is start praying more. This week alone, I want you to pick a time that you normally don't pray, and I'd like you to pray. On Fridays at noon, I start saying the Lord's Prayer. Every hour on the hour, I have my phone go off, and I'll say the Lord's Prayer every hour. And it's not just words to me. I actually bow my head, and I actually pray. You guys come up with something for your own personal lives that pulls you closer to God. He'll help you find something. And as you do that, you'll be like Jeremiah was getting the job done, not only proclaiming a message, but also you'll be prepared and you'll know what needs to be done. And God will help you in so many ways. And you'll be representing him in a world today. That's so important because, wow, what a world. Right. Father in heaven, thank you for all your many blessings. Be with us always and forever. Strength, energy, and guidance, I pray, thanking you for everything. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords forever and ever. Help us as we learn about Jeremiah to move up our own faith in you and to just come closer to you. That's what we want, God. We want to be closer to you, and we want to just rely on faith to get through things and do what needs to be done. You're the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We're asking for strength, energy, and guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. We always pray that way because that's truth-inspired. Thank you, Lord.